evening. All right, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started tonight. Let's have us a word of prayer, and then we'll get right to our singing. It's good to see everybody out tonight. Everybody smile real big. <laughs> All right, well, let's go to the Lord tonight. Father, we do come, and I do thank you for allowing us to be here tonight, Father. I thank you for blessing us. I thank you for being with each one of us, each one of our families, Father, each and every person that's represented here tonight, Father. We just... Uh, Thank you so much, and we lift each other up to you, Father. We lift the families up to you, Father. We lift every situation, every circumstance up to you. And, Father, we trust you for all things, not only tonight, but every day, Father. And we just uh, want to remember always to just thank you for everything. Father, we're expecting uh, you to move on us tonight. We're just asking you to uh, be with this service, be with the singing, be with the message, just however you want to move in this place tonight, Father. Just uh, we, we want you to move and to open our eyes and our hearts and our ears to hear and to see you tonight. We ask for your guidance and your wisdom, and we thank you tonight in Jesus' name for all things. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Through hell 
When evil comes, the body grows weak. The body grows weak. The spirit grows numb. The spirit grows numb. When these things be said, he doesn't forget. Christians can have fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right, anybody else? Y'all want me to preach with a mask on tonight? <laughs> <laughs> as long as we can hear you. Uh, as long as we can hear you. I have to use my windshield wiper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, well, tonight turn your Bibles to Philippians chapter 4. We're going to be uh, continuing our little series, uh, Fear Not, that we started last week. Um, and then again next Sunday morning, we're going to be back in Galatians. But um, for tonight, we're going to look at Philippians chapter 4. We're going to focus on verses 4 through 13 out of that chapter. And um, one of the things, I know we started talking last week about, uh, uh, about the healthy and unhealthy kinds of fear. And tonight, we're going to look at... Um, one of the main, probably, I would, well, I want to say one of, but probably the main reason why we should not fear. And um, if you're familiar with this passage, you'll know what I'm talking about. But um, but we'll we'll kind of we'll get into it. I ain't gonna give it away right up front. That would just run all the fun, would it? If I just gave everything away. Um, but just kind of to get us up to speed, with how we got to where we're at tonight. Um, last week, like I said, we started looking at the difference between healthy and unhealthy fear. Do y'all remember that? Look at that healthy fear, unhealthy fear, that healthy fear uh, type of fear that God gives us as a means to kind of protect us. Um, we call it fight or, fl or flight, whether you're going to fight or whether you're going to run. And it's that decision you got to make, but it's really that it's that it's um, that, that sense, that about emotion. I don't really, it's hard to describe exactly what it is, but you all know, you all felt that fear, and, and you know that it's like, hmm, I need to watch out, I need to be careful. You know, sometimes you all talked this morning a little bit. Uh, I remember Dale said about God uh, getting him out of a jam or two when he should have been dead, and mm -hmm. and a lot of times when that happens to us, it's because we didn't listen to God uh, when He put that fear in us. We That's thought we, that we, we we thought we were above all. That. We didn't have to worry about those kinds of things. We ended up getting ourselves into trouble. Um, you know, I was saying when Dale was talking about that this morning, I was kind of thinking about some of my driving habits in the past. And <laughs> Michelle will probably say some of my driving habits now. But, <laughs> but some of the things that we do, um, particularly, I guess, particularly when we're younger, we'll do things, uh, we'll take more chances. And I, I've noticed that as I've got older, I've taken a fewer and fewer chances I used to I wouldn't think twice about and and things but it's that it's that fear that and, and that's that healthy kind of fear but um, and and really what is designed to do is to make us stop and think about things make us really stop and think about things and really understand and realize that God is trying to protect us a lot of times from our own selves 
Um, but that's the kind of the healthy fear. Then we got the unhealthy fear. And that's that kind of fear that paralyzes us. Anybody, has anybody ever felt that way? You've just been so afraid that you couldn't do anything, you couldn't say anything, you're just kind of paralyzed by it. Yeah. Yeah, and you just don't know what to do and where to turn and what to ha what happens. That's a and and, and that's a, that's the kind of fear though that if we let that control us, what that does is it leads us to start making irrational decisions in a lot of ways. We react out of fear as opposed to reacting out of out of God's wisdom and God's direction and God's leading. And um, and in a lot of times it causes us to do things that otherwise we wouldn't even really consider ever doing. Have you ever done something like that? You've been afraid you've done something, then you go back and you look at it later, and you, you first you realize that um, there wasn't anything really to be afraid of, and then you realize, you know, I, I really wouldn't have never done that. Or reacted in that way. That's that's kind of some of the I guess some of the negative consequences um, by that. But it but in in terms of the church and religion, what that does is that that prevents us and keeps us from being able to do the things that God calls us to do. Being able to be the people God calls us to be. And like, for instance, if God calls you to sing, fear would keep you from getting up here and singing. Well, the very first time you all ever sang, were you afraid? Yeah. Oh, yeah. How many times did you know that God wanted you to get up and sing that you said no before you actually got up and did it? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. No, it's the same thing. Uh, I couldn't tell you how many times I say, I ain't getting up there and talking in front of all them people. I ain't doing all that stuff. No. Neil? The very first time? Uh, uh, very first time I ever preached, I stood here just like this. Yeah. And look, it did like this. Did look around. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was on it. <laughs> Scared to death. Me too. Of just a bunch of people. But any time God calls us out and calls us to do something, and there's some sense of fear involved in it because we don't know what to expect. We don't know um, what's going to happen. You know, a lot of it, we don't want to mess up. We don't, we don't want, you know, to mess up. And, and God, and we, we, in our mind, and this is what Satan does to He says, well, God's going to get mad if you don't do it just perfect. If you mess up, I couldn't tell you, I had never, there has never been a time I have been on this pulpit that I've preached a perfect sermon. Never. Never, ever, ever, ever. And there never will be. Um, there's always something. There's always something. There's always um, something that comes out of my mouth that probably shouldn't come out of my mouth. Or there's always something that I say that, that's hard to be understood or, or just doesn't come across the, the right way. And that's, that's just part of it because I'm a human being. Um, I mean, I, 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 and think about it. We're singing. Have you all ever got up here and sang and it just, every, it just everything was just absolutely perfect? Not one thing messed up. Not one piece of equipment ever went wrong. Not one one key out, out of key. Nothing ever went. Ever microphones worked. Mm. Poor old Janet for a long time. She, you all don't know this, but she had to play the piano up there. Half the keys didn't work. <laughs> I think they fixed it when they tuned it, didn't they? Yeah, all the keys work now. <laughs> But everything that we do, and God does not expect us to be perfect. God's not after perfection. God is after obedience. God just says, I called you, go and do what I called you to do. And, and let Him take care of it. Just do the best that we can. Now, that doesn't mean that we can just uh, say, well, God called me. I'm just going to go do it. I'm not going to prepare. I'm not going to practice. I'm not going to um, do anything. I'm not going to study or anything like that. God wants us to give Him our best, doesn't That's He? That's right. Yeah, just our best. And if our best, guess what? Our best is good enough. It may not be good for good enough for some other people, but for God, if we're giving Him our best, that's good enough. Yeah. That's exactly what He wants. That's all He wants. Because the purpose of us, uh, the whole, anybody know why God calls us to do things? Do, you, do we think that God uh, needs us no. to, to do no. the, His work? He don't. He doesn't. He calls us, and it's to help us, and it's to help other people. It's to help each other. Yeah. And God chooses to use us for it. And it's a great blessing that God chooses us. Us to, right. to use us. And we can't let fear of the unknown and fear of rejection and fear of this and fear of that stand in the way of us being and doing the things that God calls us to. Because that defeats the whole purpose. Because we face things in life that are going to make us afraid, don't we? And how are we going to get over to the other side and make it into eternity if we can't make it through those barriers and those things that stand in our way in life? 
And, and so God's trying to teach us and help us to overcome those things, to be overcomers. I, I think we may have preached about that at one time or another, being an overcomer. Right. But it's, 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 being, it's not being overcome by fear, but overcoming and conquering fear. You know, we need to be in control of our fear yeah. and not let it control us. We, we need to put it in the proper perspective and use the fear that God gives us for the purpose God gives us, but don't be paralyzed by it. Right. And we need to never let, let up. We don't let up. We don't let down. We don't quit. We don't stop. We keep our foot on the gas and we keep going. Paul says we push forward. Push towards the mark. Amen. And, we, and we can't do that if we're afraid. If we're constantly afraid. Yeah. And in the scripture here in Philippians chapter 4, Paul is going to talk about this. And he's going to talk about the reasons why we should not fear and how we can um, combat it against the fear that comes against us. Because Satan is going to use fear against us. That's one of his greatest weapons is fear. That's what he uses against us. You know, when I talk about fear, I'm talking about fear, anxiety, worry, stress, all these things that paralyze us. He's used, trying to use that against us. We can't let that happen. That's true. But he says here, in Philippians chapter 4, starting in verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always, I will say it again, rejoice. That goes along with uh, the last two songs, at least, that Neil sang. It goes along with what you all testified about this morning. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. And he says, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends or passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Then he says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And he says, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me, and he's talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ, or seen in me, that's a key thing there, whatever you have heard of me or seen in me, whatever I have demonstrated to you, put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. And he says, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you have no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. And think about Paul and Paul's life. He says, I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances. Paul was shipwrecked. Paul was beaten. Paul was thrown into prison. Paul was run out of town many times. He said, I've learned to be content. And we just in our normal, everyday lives of where we're at right now, have we learned to be content in whatever situation we're in? No. Mm. No. We fuss. Complain. We fuss? I fuss. Complain. Complain. Say, Lord, why? Why? Just give me what I want. Why me? Yeah, why me? Paul says, I've learned to be content. <laughs> Whew, that's hard to do. He says, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether we're well fed or hungry. We're all looking around. We all look like we're pretty well fed. I'm very well fed. Poor little folks out in the Chinese restaurant, they just bring it on to the table. <laughs> and she calls and orders it, and that's all. Be ready in five minutes. I walked in today, I come and sit down at the table. By the time I sat on the table, she was carrying it out to the table. And she said, I'll get your drinks and carry it back. We're well fed. Well fed yeah. He says, whether living in plenty or in want. And here it is. I can do everything through Him who gives me strength. Or we better know it is I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Do we believe it though? Everybody shaking their head, yes. We'll see you just a minute. 
But back to the very beginning of that. What, or the very first thing I read, he says this, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. And when you're looking at that, Paul doesn't say, if you feel like it, or if you think it's a good idea, or I think it's a good idea, it's almost like he's commanding us to rejoice in the Lord always. So much so, he says, I'll say it again. We're to rejoice in God. We're to rejo rejoice in all things, every situation. We're to rejoice in the simple fact that, that we serve the living God, that Jesus Christ saved our soul, that we are on a path that's going to lead to eternal life. And we, we should be rejoicing in that regardless of whatever the situation is. Regardless of what the circumstance is. Regardless of what's happening, we should be rejoicing in the Lord always. Amen. Yeah. Go ahead and give me praise. This, this is His house. And we say that, and you know, it's easy for me to stand up here and say to rejoice in the Lord. But it's hard to do it sometimes, isn't it? Yes, when we're having those bad days, We don't do that. That'd be crazy to do that. But we need to slow down. We need to stop. We need to think about things. We need to think about why Paul, this is the same Paul, like I said, who was thrown into prison, who was beaten to the point that, uh, to the closest point you could come to death without dying. <clears throat> Probably to the point where he was in so much pain, he wished he was dead. Yeah. And he's saying rejoice. He was shipwrecked. You remember when Paul was on his way to the Roman prison? You remember what happened to him? He got shipwrecked and bit by a snake. They were like, oh, he's going to die now. You dead now, Paul. No, he didn't die. But they were shipwrecked. He was hauled before the Roman government. Eventually he was killed, but he says rejoice in the Lord. And why do we rejoice in the Lord? Because, he says, this is verse 5, let your gentleness be evident to all, the Lord is near. That's why we rejoice, because the Lord is near. Now there's two meanings behind that. There's two ways to understand that second part of that verse. The first way is the Lord's coming is near. Do we realize that the Lord's coming is near? Amen. We ain't going to be waiting around for uh, 2,000 more years. No. I don't know when he's coming. Anybody you now? Here's another thing to keep to keep in your mind, in mind. If somebody says, "Well, the Lord's coming back at this exact day, time, blah, blah," throw it out. They lie to you. They don't know. No. no. They don't know what their Bible says. We don't know when. No. But the Lord is coming. Yeah. And I've said this many times. Whether or not He comes and just comes in the clouds and gets us like what we read about in our Bible, or we leave this this earthly life and we meet Him in the air and on our way to heaven, He's coming to get every one of us. If you're a child of God, He is coming to get you, and His coming is near. And it don't matter if you live 50 years, 100 years, or 150 years, He's coming to get you, and it's very near. Yes, yeah, this life goes by like that. And it doesn't matter how long you think it's been. It goes by quick. Now, the younger you are, it seems like the longer it is. I remember when I was a kid, uh, I couldn't wait until I was 16 years old. Yeah. And I couldn't wait until I was 18 years old because nobody could tell me what to do. <laughs> then I couldn't wait until I was 21. I won't tell you why I couldn't wait until I was 21. You can figure that out on your own. And then after that, I was like, well, well I did all this waiting. Didn't see nothing. Oh. <laughs> and then it was like 24, 25 when my insurance went down. And I, then I rejoiced in the Lord. <laughs> borrow money too. Take yeah, money. borrow money. Rent a car. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But but it goes by so fast. It does. So fast. You know, I, and, and I mean, you know, we were talking this morning about trying to figure out when we graduated high school. How many years ago it was? Yeah, Eddie kind of laughed at us. <laughs> I saw him laughing behind his mask at us. <laughs> it's only been, what, 25 years for us? Something like that? Something like that. Yeah. But how quick? How been quick? It's been 49 for me. Yeah, 49. Well, you've been out of school longer. I've been alive. <laughs> but think how quick. How quick. I mean, I remember things just like it was just the other day. 
I sit down and I'll, I'll listen to it. I'll hear a song come on the radio. It would come out in like the 80s or the 90s. And I'm like, ooh, yeah, that's my music. And I'll get the thing, it's like, that's old. The kids are like, the kids are calling my oldies. Yeah. I'm like, wow. Or I'll sit down and I'll watch it. Uh, I've been watching the, the Star Trek, The Next Generation. Yeah. And, I, you know, I get to thinking, and that was in the 90s. And, uh, and I guess 90s and maybe early 2000s. But I wonder how what them people look like now. Probably close to death, if not already dead. <laughs> you know, we'll watch Andy Griffith on TV. Yeah. You know, the vast majority of the people in that show are dead. They are, yeah. They're dead. Mm -hmm. Opie's, I think, is the only one that's still alive. And he's an old man. He's in his 50s and 60s. Good smoke. Yeah, well, they're all gone. Yeah. Matt Dillon killed them all. He killed them all. <laughs> he finally got them all. <laughs> but we think about those things. And in our mind, it's not that long ago. But when we stop and think about it, how quickly it goes by. So the Lord's coming is near. Yep. Yep. The other way that we need to stop and think about that is the Lord is near to all of us. Yep. You see, we don't have anything to be afraid of because God is right there with us. Yep. Even in those bad days, we can rejoice because God is right there with us. He is near. He said, uh, 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 Patty said it this morning, He's not going to leave us or forsake us. He is right here with us. He's not going to abandon us. He's not going to just leave us one day. He's like, oh, I'm done with you. Oh, make it on your own. I've got other things to do. He will stick with us. It says that you're a friend that sticks closer than a brother. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And He is right there with us all the time. He is near. And we can rejoice that He is near. And, that, and, that, and we have to rejoice. And we also have to serve as an example to other people. That's why we've already talked about this. But we, we, we are the example to other people, especially when we're having a bad day. People are going to see how we react to the situation and the things around us. Are we going to say, oh! God, or are we going to say, I'm going to rejoice anyway because I know you're near and I trust you. We have to trust Him. Yeah. And that's what it boils down to is trust in Him. That's true. And then in verse 6, He says, Do not be anxious about anything. Boy, well, we could use that, could we? Yeah. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Have we ever been anxious about anything? Oh, yeah. If you ain't going to raise your hand, <laughs> you don't have to. But if you're going to say no, you're lying. Yeah. We ever worried about anything? No, sure. A lot of times all the worry about it I've never had. Exactly. And the things that do, you can't have, you don't have any control over it anyway. No. But he says, do not be anxious about anything. Don't worry about things. Don't be con that concerned about things. I don't, there is a healthy amount of concern about situations, but we don't obsess over it and worry about it and stress over it. And we've had that. Just that you ever had just that uneasy feeling? Yeah. yeah. And you just, just generally, I don't know, it's, it's not really a worry about a specific thing, but just a general, just an uneasiness, just a worry feeling about just everything. We can't do that. We can't be that way. He says, do not be anxious about everything, anything. But when we're anxious, what we do? He says, prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. If you have a need for something, present it to God. If you're anxious about something, give it over to God. If you're worried about something, give it over to God. Yeah. Because we have a promise that God will provide what we need. That God will be there with us. That God will, 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 will stand beside us. will walk beside us. You know, we worry and worry. We worry about, we worry about all the things that, 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 that have happened. Then we worry about all the things that may or may not happen. And we forget. God says, just trust me. Just trust me. That's what He's saying. I'm going to read you a little story here. This came out of our daily bread from this past Wednesday. It was, um, 
It's, and this is it's just an example of, of what I'm talking about, about just trusting God and presenting your everything to God with prayer and thanksgiving. And it says this, it says 300 children were dressed and seated for breakfast, like kids. It says, and a prayer of thanks was offered for the food, but there was no food. It says, situations like this were not unusual for orphanage director and missionary George Mueller. And George Mueller, if you didn't know, he was a missionary. He died in uh, 1898. He'd been gone a while. But it says, here was yet another opportunity to see how God would provide. And it says, within minutes of Mueller's prayer, a banker who couldn't sleep the night before showed up at the door. Sensing that the orphanage could use the bread, he had made three batches. It says, not long afterward, the town milkman appeared. You ever had the milkman roll up to your house and say, you want some milk? Is it free milk? Wow. He says his cart, and this was in the 1800s, so they didn't have the milk truck, they had a cart. He says his cart had broken down in front of the orphanage. Oh, that's just luck, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, just luck. Coincidence. Yeah, just luck. That'd be like us, you know, not have a bit of food in the house, no money to go buy no food. And... No, and somebody stops by. So I hear I had, uh, I had a, uh, uh, I don't know, I don't know, I had an extra pig or something. I don't know. Here, here's some meat. Or here's some bread. And they say, oh, that's great. That's good. We're blessed. But then God goes even a step further. Well, they need something to drink. So here comes the Coca-Cola truck. Rolling it down there. <laughs> Breaks down. And instead of calling it the tow truck and say, hey, you want some of this over here? Uh, yeah. I mean, that's how, I mean, that's the type of miracle it really is if we want to put it in 2020 terms. But it says, not long after the town milkman appeared, his cart had broken down in front of the orphanage and not wanting the milk to spoil, he offered it to Mueller. So he offered this to prayer. He prayed to God. He says, he says Lord, thank you for this food. And there was nothing in the house. But he trusted God. He trusted that God would provide. And what did God do? God provided abundantly. Yeah. We ever experienced that? Yeah. You don't know where, what, where, what, where the blessing you You need something. What, it don't have to be food or water or something like that. It be anything. But you have a need for something. Yeah. And you present that to God and it just shows up. Amen. Exactly. And God just provides. I can tell you the number of times just since I've been here that there's been something that this church has needed. And it just it just it just shows up. I'm like, thank you, Lord. Yes. I mean it's it, there's no other way to explain it except this is God blessing and taking care of his people. And he does that. And we need to stop and thank God for it. Not even yes. We need to acknowledge God for it. We need to acknowledge that this came from God. And don't be worried about it. Don't be anxious about it. Present it to God and let God work. But see, where we get into trouble is we don't let God work. We, we will present it to God and then we'll go to work trying to take care of it ourselves. And we get frustrated. We get angry. We get mad. We can't understand why things aren't working out for us. Well, because we're not letting God do God's work. We're trying to do God's work for God. Yeah. Say, God, I'm going to pray about this and I'm going to go take care of myself. Well, we've just abandoned God all together in it. But when we trust God, He says this, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You know, I can try to explain that verse. You cannot explain it. You cannot ex explain the peace of God that he's talking about here. Just that ultimate peace of God that comes over. It's just something we have to experience. It's, 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 uh, it is. It says it passes all understanding. You cannot understand it to explain it. You just know it. You just know it. Have you ever felt that peace of God? Yeah. Yeah. You just have that peace yeah. that comes over you. You know that God's got his hand on you. Yeah. And that God has this. God's got it. Yeah. That's the only way you can explain it. Mm -hmm. We experience that when we trust God. We truly are just trusting God. And not trying to fix everything ourselves. Because there are some things that we cannot fix. 
We, do we realize that there are things in this life that we cannot fix? That right. we have no control over? That's right. And God doesn't expect us to fix it. God does not expect us to fix every problem that's in this world. God expects us to repent of our sins, follow Him, and be obedient to Him. Yeah. And God will fix it. Y'all know that, and this is something that, that I'll say, it is not our job to save one single soul. It's not our job. Our job is to present the gospel of Jesus Christ to people through what we say, but more importantly, how we live, and let the Holy Spirit save their soul. The only person that can save a soul is God Himself. Amen. And God does that through the Holy Spirit, through the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And if we're being obedient to God and following the prompting of the Holy Spirit and living a godly Christian life in front of people, in all times, good times and bad times, then the Holy Spirit will work through that. There are times you don't have to say a word to people. There's times when it's not appropriate to say anything to anybody. Just let them watch how you live. Treat people the way that you want to be treated. You know, that old golden rule. You know, we think that we, we make it our mission to be so confrontational sometimes. It's not what God called us to be. You know, there are all kinds of people in this world living in sin, all kinds of different sin. And they get a bad impression on what the church represents and what the church is like by the way the people that say they belong to the church and say that they're Christians treat them. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't treat them any differently than we do each other. Well, we should treat them better than we treat each other because sometimes we don't treat each other very well. We should treat them the way that we would want someone else to treat us. That's, that's yeah. what it says. And that's what yeah. we need to be doing. And it doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter what color their skin is. It doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter um, what they think about things, what their religion is, how they live their life. We are to treat them with the love of Jesus Christ yeah. every night. Period. And there's no treat them this way, but no, there's no but in there. Treat everybody with the love of Jesus Christ. Period. That's just that's what the Bible says. If you don't like it. Take it up with God, not me. Take it up with the boss. <laughs> but then he says, this is, this is exactly what I'm talking about. What, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on such things. And that goes to how we treat people. That also goes to our attitude towards things. You see, when we um, have a what I would call a negative or a pessimistic attitude towards things, everything that we approach in life, we're going to go into it looking for the negatives in it. You ever done that? Yeah. You go into air, the, whatever the situation is, the only thing you're looking for is the bad and the negative in it. Oh, this is going to be horrible. You know, we say, oh, this is bad. Bad, 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 bad. Or we think, we get up, and, and, and oh, I've done this, get up and say, oh, it's just going to be a horrible day at work. It's a horrible day. I don't even want to go. <laughs> you know what? When I go into it with that attitude, guess what? It's a horrible day. Yeah. It's a horrible day. Or, you know, we're going along, maybe not even having such a bad day. But then something happens, somebody's nasty to us or something, and we go into that negative attitude place, and guess what? It just ruins the rest of the day, don't it? Yeah. We just go around like this the rest of the day. <laughs> People come talk to you the way you want. Don't talk to me. When I worked for the state, I used to have a, I used to have an actual office with a door on it. And uh, now, when I worked for EKU, I had a cubicle, but um, I used to have a little office. And my staff, it, I would get tickled at them. And some days, that was no big deal. But if I had my door shut, I always kept my door open so they could kind of come and go and ask questions and things. And if I had my door shut, they would come. I hear this. <laughs> Real life, you know, and then you know, I was like, "Cut in!" And I'd see this the bare little door. Can I talk to you? <laughs> you know, I could not be having a bad day. I could be having a bad day. And if I, if I, you know, what I was like, "Well, yeah, I'll come on in." Or if I, or if I said, 
No, you know what? No, not right now. That was my attitude. said, no, not right now. Go. Probably like these sometimes. And then, oh, I did sometimes. I said, go. You can come back later. Got stuff going on. <laughs> but that was a bad attitude. And that not only ruined the rest of my day, but it probably ruined their day too. See, when we go and we look at things, why don't we try to look for the positive things? What, what, you know, even if it's even if it's going to be a tough day, like, you know, how can I find God in this? How can I find God working in this? How can I find God blessing in this? Or even in a bad situation, it's like, you know, how can? Sometimes we have to stop and, and I just ask God, God, I don't see it. Show me the positive in this. It's all changing our attitude about things. Sometimes can change the whole perception we have on things. And our life in general. Have you ever known anybody that it just seems like they're just unhappy? Yeah. Now sometimes people are just generally unhappy because they uh, have no relationship with Jesus and He has them under conviction. And they're miserable because they're under conviction. Now sometimes that's what happens. But sometimes it's because they have went through their life and the only thing they've looked at is the negative to everything. And that's all they've ever found. If we go through life looking for the negative and everything, that's all we're ever going to find. We shouldn't do that. Because God's still God. And even in the bad things, they're still positive. Because we still know, what uh, Paul tells us in Romans, God works everything for the good of those who love Him. Uh, I done messed up the verse. Y'all know what I'm talking about. All things work for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purposes. God's going to work and use all things for His purposes. So think about that. And last verse. I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, Philippians 4.13. Um, NIV says, I can do everything through Him who gives me strength. King James says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And I asked you all in the very beginning, do we believe that? Do we believe that we can do all things through Jesus? That we can accomplish anything through Jesus? That anything is possible through Jesus? And most of you shook your head yes. And I said, you know, hold on to that thought. Because if you're going to say yes, then are you going to live up to it? Are you going to put aside your worry and anxiety and trust in God? Are you going to trust that whatever God calls you to, that He's going to see it through and see you through it? Because you can't have it both ways. You can't trust one day and not trust the next. We either trust God or we don't trust God. And we have to work on that. So we all have to work on that. So that's what I want us to pray about. Um, so let's just go to the Lord tonight. Let's just dismiss in prayer. And you are just, uh, whatever's on your heart, just give it to the Lord. But let's pray. Father, we do come tonight. And I do thank you for this time. I thank you for this service. I thank you for our singing. Father, I thank you for this word that you've given us. Father, I just ask that you help us to have the faith and the trust in you, to follow you always, to be obedient to you. Not to worry so much about being perfect, but to just be obedient and to follow you. Yes, Lord. Father, we pray that you give us the strength to make it through, Father. Give us the endurance. Give us the power and the authority of the Holy Spirit. Help us to see you working in every and each situation in our lives. Guide us today. Guide us this week. Help us as we go about to be a light that shines for you. Take us home, Father, but not out of your presence. And we thank you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.